Okay, we are live. Recording is in process. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is Intro to Web Development, uh, or it used to be called Intro to Programming, but this is more specifically Intro to Web Development, which is programming. It's like squares and rectangles, right? Not all rectangles are squares, or but all squares are rectangles, something like that. But um, you know, it is still computer programming, but we're programming to build, and it's still software development, software engineering. But we're what kind of software are we going to be building? We're going to be building software that you're very familiar with, software that is that lives on the web. Like if, you have, if you've ever gone on uh, Facebook on your browser or Amazon on your browser or, you know, any website on your browser, that's software on your browser. So that's a web application. So we're going to learn how, the very basics, very, very basics from the very beginning of web development okay so it's going to be um this is going to be geared to um so if you have no coding experience in the chat could you please, please uh say i you have zero coding experience i i i i <laughs> cool cool yeah, you can say it in the chat you can say it out loud whatever is more whatever's more engaging and fun for you because you know, one of the best ways to learn is when you're having fun doing it, right? I. There we go. So it looks like we have a lot of people who um, coding is very new to them. And maybe some people um, are more experienced and are not saying I. Uh, in the chat, could you type in G if you have a lot of coding or if you have some coding experience? Okay, we got some people with uh, got the got the OGs. Okay, cool, cool. So we got some coding experience here. Uh, mostly people with uh, no coding experience. And um, in the chat, uh, type in a dot if you're just shy and you're just you didn't want to say I or G, like a dot, like a period. Probably no one's gonna do it because. If you were shy to do that, you're probably too shy to press that, right? and that's okay. So uh, we're going to get started. Uh, this this is going to be geared towards uh, the very beginner, very basic. I'm going to assume you know nothing about programming or coding or anything at all. I'm going to talk about things that we all do know, though. Uh, popular websites. We're going to talk about how uh, web applications work. We're going to talk about how it's built, what languages are used to build some of them, and um, we're going to actually build something using these languages that we're going to talk about. So that's going to be the plan here. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And when I share my screen, uh, real quick, this is D Discord, by the way. This is where uh, students communicate with me. And uh, I, I can communicate with my class. We can have private messages. We can have help channels. Students can even join me on Zoom private rooms and ask for help. They can share their screen, just like I'm sharing my screen with you right now. And uh, when a student shares their screen, I can even point to parts of the screen using my annotation tool. I could be like, hey, uh, right here, you have uh, uh, an error. Or hey, uh, good job right here in creating this function to do this, you know? And I can, basically it's just like on site where, you know, in real life, I would, this is all real life, but on site, I would, you know, point to your computer and say, hey, right here, you got to fix that part, or hey, right here, good job. Uh, I could do that in Zoom. And yeah, my students are kind of funny. They make jokes all the time. Uh, so let me just go ahead and share with you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this out. We'll close this out. And let me just go ahead and share with you guys what we're going to be working on here. Um, we're going to be we're going to be working on learning about the web. So let's talk about the web. Uh, let's let's do, look at some examples and let's talk about how a website works. Okay. So when a, when you access a web application or actually even a phone application or any application in general, 
there's a request and there's a response. So I would like to go to the whiteboard here. And this is from our morning lecture here. Uh, there's gonna be a request and a response. A request is gonna happen from, I'm gonna show you an example of a request response cycle and then we're gonna draw this out, okay? So a request happens, like let's say I go on ESPN.com. I know there's the Olympics going on. It's an international event worldwide, you know? So I'm sure many people go on ESPN.com. Uh, people love, you know, sports and celebrating, you know, games. This is like a nice thing, right? So people go on ESPN.com. So to go on ESPN.com, I know I typed in just ESPN.com, but if I, if I really look at it, it's HTTPS colon slash slash www.ESPN.com. Now ESPN.com is the domain name of the website. Okay, it's just a name that's attached to a website, um, to this website. Uh, HTTP, and I don't wanna get too technical with the technical terms, but it stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. You don't have to memorize that. But what it just means is it's some, some protocol that websites that live on, you know, on the browser use so that when you type in HTTP, uh, you're making a certain type of request. You're requesting a website from a certain address. And ESPN.com, it actually has an address that's more complicated than just ESPN.com. It has an IP address. Okay, so uh, if you, are you familiar with what an IP address is? In the chat, type yes or no if you heard of IP address or not. Yes, that's cool. So IP addresses are like a way to identify a computer, okay? A computer, and, and computer is a very general term. And a computer that's going to serve websites that's gonna be called a server, okay? It's just a computer whose main job is to serve website, a serve a certain website. So ESPN has a computer that, uh, that whose function is to serve this website to us on the web. So that computer is called a web server, okay? So that web server, it's going to actually have a, that computer, which is a web server, uh, it's actually going to have an IP address. What does an IP address look like? What, what is the other searches? What is, I some funny searches here. What does an IP address look like? And it looks something like this. Um, this is a bunch of numbers. Uh, it's not like this, but it, you know, it's a bunch of numbers separated by dots, okay? Which uh, we're not gonna get into right now, but uh, it's like an address to identify a computer. So it might be like, you know, 132, 16, 12, and five or something. It's, it's, but you're, and what is, what is the IP address for ESPN? What is the IP address for ESPN? Okay, so check this out. This is ESPN's IP address. If I just go, to create a new tab, paste it. Maybe that wasn't it. But basically, uh, you can access ESPN.com using its IP address, but you're not gonna sit there and memorize IP addresses of all your favorite websites, right? You'd rather just say, hey, ESPN.com or Facebook.com or Amazon.com. So these computers, they don't just have IP addresses attached to them. They also have these, these websites that are created. They have domain names attached to them too so that people all over the world can just remember, hey, Facebook.com, ESPN.com. And they can figure out uh, what websites they want to go to just by it's easier to rem remember that way. So a server has an IP address attached to it. So what does that mean? Um, so right here, you're going to make a request to access a website. So you are right here. 
terrible drawing. But you know, you're happy, you're smiling, you're trying to access this website on your laptop. No, it's a terrible drawing. But this is your laptop, you're trying to access your web website. So you are gonna be called the client. Client. Okay. I don't know why this is this all of a sudden. Okay. So you are gonna be called the client, okay? You're the client. And you make a request, kind of like how I make a request on the browser. I'm making a HTTP request to a certain domain name, which is attached to a computer that we're gonna call a web server uh, that's going to give us back a response. So when I make a request, I'm making a request like, I'm making a request like HTTP, okay, request, request such as HTTP colon slash slash ESP, www.espn.com. So I make a request as a client, right? Client, you're a client, I'm a client. Anyone that's accessing a website is a client. Uh, we're accessing a website. And when I make a request, that request goes through the World Wide Web and tries to figure out, hey, which computer does this address belong to? ESPN.com. And when it finds that, it's gonna find some computer and this computer, what do, what do we call this computer again? This special type of computer that just serves websites? Post it in the chat. Server, good. And I love the participation. Real quick, side fun fact. Um, it says you learn, you know, you learn 10% of what you read or something, right? Let's look at this real quick. I wanted to, this, is, this, will, this will apply to you wherever you go. So 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what, you, what we see, 50% of what we see and hear. So that's, that's what you're doing right now. You're just seeing and hearing me lecturing. So you're only actually learning like kind of half of everything that we're talking about. And if you actually take time to discuss what you learn with others, you're gonna learn like 70% of it. 80%, if you actually build out, if you start actually coding, if you actually, and you don't have to code along right now, but if you were actually coding uh, and you have this recorded lecture and you started coding on the side um, later after this is over, you learn 80% of it. And then 95% of what we teach others. But you know what participation is? Participation in this chat is right between these two. So you can get more bang for your time here um, by participating in the chat. And you guys are doing a great job of it. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and appreciate that and say thank you for that. Great job. So you're actually doing more than this, than the average uh, listener. Uh, you're, you're right in between. You're almost discussing it with each other, right? You're answering questions, you're participating. So great job. Um, so this is called a server. Excellent. So this is called a server. This is called a server. Okay. So this is called a server. It's just some fancy looking computer. It might not even have like a monitor like yours does. It's just like literally just hardware with just like some server, but it's a computer then nonetheless. And it, it can be attached to a monitor and you can see stuff too. It's just a computer like uh, more specialized for serving websites. So it'll when, when we make a request as a client to a certain address, it finds the server on the World Wide Web that, map, who's, uh, that, that belongs to this domain name. And this is ESPN.com server. And its job is to say, hey, um, okay, it looks like someone's requesting a website from a, a web page from our website. So a website can have many web pages, right? ESPN.com. Here's a web page, ESPN.com. Here's a web page, ESPN.com slash NBA. Does this look like a new request to you right here? Right? It's a brand new request. So when I click on a link, it'll make a new request. So, but it's still going to the same server, but it's gonna, the server, is listening for requests to different web pages that it has. So the ESPN server might have a, uh, you know, different routes that it can 
a sect, like maybe ESPN.com just by itself, that's called like the home route. Maybe ESPN.com slash NBA. Maybe ESPN.com slash, does it have Olympics? Yeah, it does. I guess that properly. That's pretty cool. There's another route. So a website has many web pages that it can have. So for this request, it's like, okay, uh, it's requesting, like the client is requesting information from ESPN.com, the website for the, which page? Is this ESPN.com? So that's one route. Let's just designate it by slash because let's just call it slash, okay? Slash meaning there's nothing that comes after ESPN.com. So it's like, okay, this is the ESPN server and they want just ESPN.com webpage. So the server gives back, so, so from a request, the server is gonna give back a response back to us. Oh, now it wants to be big font, huh? Okay, now it's gonna give us back a response and the response is gonna look something like this this web page and we'll talk about what the response is technically comprised of but so we have the response here and then let's say i make a request to espn.com slash nba and so that's going to be a new request and then maybe we'll designate that by the route slash N B A. So ESPN is gonna be like, oh, okay. Uh, they're knocking on our door, ESPN.com. So this server is gonna figure out what to do. And this server.com has all the web pages for ESPN.com. And which web page do we want? Do we want the one for the home page? No, nope. it looks like they requested ESPN.com slash N B A. So we're gonna give a different response to this laptop. So then that's why when I go on ESPN.com, this is my request, I send a request and it happens so quickly, right? We got high speed internet now, 2021. Is it 2020? It's almost 2022 already. Um, and then it gives this response. And then when I go to ESPN.com slash NBA and notice I can either click on a link that'll create a response or I can either directly manually type it myself here and press enter. That's a request. And then I get a response back. And this one's specifically about NBA. What about for soccer, the most popular sport in the world? Here's the response that we get back. Okay. So we get back a response. So it's a request response cycle. Okay. It's called the request response cycle. That is fundamentally how software applications work. There's going to be a request that's coming in and then a response that comes uh, that the application is going to give back to the client. Okay. So pop quiz. Um, what are we considered if we're visiting a website? What is the word for the users that visit a website? Put it in the chat. Client. Good. Very nice. Good. You guys are good. Good. Good stuff. So Good stuff, good stuff. Very happy to see that. So there's a request response to the client. Uh, you, we're, we're the clients. The, the, the server sends a response back to the client. Awesome. Any questions on the request response cycle and what we covered so far before we move on to HTML, CSS, and some coding related stuff? Cool. cool. All right. So now what is this response? I mean, to us, it looks like a nice and pretty web page, but what is a web page comprised of? Well, there are three things that a response, which is going to be the web page, web page is going to be the response. And so, matter of fact, a response is not always going to be a web page, by the way. Sometimes it's going to be just data that's just like not formatted in a website at all. It's just like raw data that could look something like this. And we, go, we, we teach students how to create something called APIs. But sometimes you'll get responses that look just like this. And it'll just show this on the web page. And it won't show any, it won't be formatted with HTML and CSS. So there's different types of responses. But for websites, we're going to give back responses that consist of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
That's some technical words. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is what the response is going to comprise of. HTML plus CSS plus JavaScript. I'm going to uh, type in JS. That's how it's commonly uh, referred to, JS, JavaScript. OK, it's different than Java. I know. Uh, you know, raise your hand or say say I if uh, you've always thought Java was the same thing as JavaScript. I, that was me. I. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Aye. Good. Yeah. Same here. Me too. So um, Java and JavaScript are two different languages. JavaScript is a language that can be used for the front end and back end, and I'll explain what that means later too. But front end just means what the things that the client will see. So the nice pretty stuff that the client will see. The back end is the server logic that we're not going to see as a client. Okay. Uh, that's not related to the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this page is comprised purely out of just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, what is HTML? What is CSS? And what is JavaScript? Uh, let me go on this one. Yeah, what is HTML? What is CSS? And what is JavaScript? So HTML is equals to the content of a web page. Do you want to see what this website looks like without CSS and JavaScript and just HTML? Let's take a look. What is ESPN.com? Let's just go to the home page so we can see the nice home page here. What does ESPN.com look like with just HTML? So I have this extension, this uh, Google Chrome extension called Web Developer that allows me to do some tasks that web developers uh, you know, that, that are helpful for web developers. I'm going to click disable all styles. That's going to disable what's called the CSS. Do not. Let's do NBA.com. I think ESPN.com might be acting up or my, or my, um, there you go. So ESPN.com was just acting up a little bit. Okay, but I'm disabling all the styles. This is purely HTML. So now that you see this, this is just the content, right? It has all the words, all the paragraphs, even the buttons. Like, I don't know what this button does, but even the buttons and the links, it has the links, it has the images, but it doesn't, but I just disabled the CSS. So because I disabled the CSS, you'll see this website with just pure HTML. So what do you think CSS did? Or what is, what do you think the purpose of CSS is? If you see that I disabled CSS and now it looks like this. What is the purpose of CSS? Yeah. CSS allows us to arrange the content in a nice layout, styling, styling my content. So HTML is content, right? Content includes what? Images, links, any words, paragraphs, text, buttons. What else? What else do we see? Links, images, a bunch of images and links and words, right? Let's, uh, let's bring our CSS back in here. Okay. And what did it do? The CSS did what to our... Uh, CSS did what? It allowed us to you see all these words. It formatted this, these words in little boxes. Sometimes these boxes have rounded corners. Sometimes you're not even going to see boxes. You're going to see circles, depending on the website, you know. Uh, but as you can see, CSS is going to arrange, format, and style the content. So HTML is the content. CSS is the styling. There's code that you're going to write for HTML to describe all the content of the website. And then there's code that you would write for CSS to describe how you want that content arranged and styled. And we're going to do both of the, those language, uh, languages today. and we're going to even touch upon a little bit of JavaScript. There's also going to be JavaScript in your response. In your, uh, remember the request response cycle? There's going to be HTML, CSS, 
So you guys are clear about the purpose of HTML, CSS so far, right? Put in the chat. At least it's the purpose of it. Okay, cool, cool. So what is the purpose of JavaScript though? Well, we already got the content and we already got the style. So what's the point of JavaScript? Well, the point of JavaScript is maybe, um, I think this website doesn't have as much JavaScript as, Oh, look at this. So you see, when I hover over something, it kind of zooms in, right? So based on my actions, it kind of modifies the page a little bit, right? If I hover over something, it modifies it. If I click see more, like if I hover over this button, look what happened. If I hover over this content, which is HTML, this, what happened to the CSS of this particular content? It changed, right? So based on the user's action, a user, another word for that is clients, right? Based on the client's actions uh, and uh, interaction with the website, the website does some certain things. Now this might not have as much JavaScript as I wanted to see. Let's try, oh, ooh, uh, there's some JavaScript right there. Saw that? I hover over playoffs and guess what? A new box, a bunch of new content comes in. So JavaScript allows for interactivity with the website to make the website what's called dynamic. Dynamic means it's gonna, um, it can change based on certain actions and certain inputs. So an action could be something like if I hover over something or if I scroll, like let's check out LinkedIn, linkedin.com. Let's look at the JavaScript here, okay? When I hover over this, look at this. Uh, let me just put it down. When I hover over this, what happened? It, the CSS change, right? Um, when I click share, look at the CS, the background color change. So that is JavaScript. JavaScript allows you to have interactivity with the website. So help me fill this out here. So HTML is equal to content. CSS is equal to what? The design and style. Style, design, arranging the content. And what is JavaScript doing? Functionality, uh -huh. functionality, interaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like it, it'll, it kind of like animation in a way, yeah, like, um, it allows you to like, based on your actions, it can modify the HTML and CSS that shows up in the page. It can change the HTML and CSS that shows up in the page. Like for example, here, did we see, this is more HTML, right? Here's some words and images. Words and images are HTML and the CSS allows these words and images to be formatted in this way, instead of being all one on top of each other. They're like side by side, they all have a nice little spacing between them. The CSS allows that, right? But all this HTML and CSS came up just because I hovered over something. So there's actions like hover, on focus, on focusing out, on click. So things that a user can do on scroll. Let's take a look at the LinkedIn example on scroll. So look, at, look what happens to the HTML. You see, you see my scroll bar here, right? When I keep scrolling down, look what happens. On scroll, it does what? It loads up more HTML and CSS from the server. That's a JavaScript thing. So JavaScript is interactivity. Interactivity. Okay, good. Any questions on the purpose of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript?
Nope. Is all clear? It's, when you use something like GoDaddy to like create your website, it just kind of does it all automatically for you. The HTML, the CSS, and the, the JavaScript, it kind of just puts it all together for you, kind of cheats for you, I'm guessing. Uh, GoDaddy, um, I'm familiar with GoDaddy for like creating, do getting domain names. So like, let's, uh, let's say I uh, put a website online. It's not going to have any domain names yet. It's just going to have an IP address and people have to memorize the IP address to go into that website. But GoDaddy, I can use it to, you know, um, get a domain name and attach it to my website and it'll make it so that, hey, I can say, hey, go to robdehall.com instead of go to 5.8.9.6.8 to visit my website, I can say, hey, go to robdehall.com. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> we're gonna be creating websites using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in the beginning, in the, in the coding bootcamp. Uh, you're gonna first learn how to do, how to create websites using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I actually would like to go over that and uh, let me just show you guys how the learning platform looks like, okay? So login.codingdojo.com, leave. Okay, so introduction to programming, this one. All right, cool. So there is, um, and what is, what is a full stack? A full stack is a website that will have a front end like what you saw, but notice how there's a bunch of data here. Like, where's the scores? This is going ESPN. Maybe there's, yeah, you see all this data? There's not one person that's just like updating this um, HTML every single day. There's actually someone that's updating the database, you know? And then the database information is shown here. So the database is called the back end. And a full stack website will have a front end and a back end integrating a database into a website as a full stack. Okay, we're not gonna get into that right now with the full stack. We're just gonna talk about the front end because this is, we only have like an hour and a half uh, ish together. And um, the, in the coding bootcamp though, you'll be, for the first two weeks, you'll learn just front end extensively and then you're gonna go full stack for three months. So one full month of Python full stack, another full month of JavaScript full stack, including how to use JavaScript to even talk to databases because JavaScript can be used for not just interactivity with websites. It can also be used in the back end uh, to talk to databases and get information from a database and then show it on the front end. And that's actually what I'm teaching right now, uh, full time is full stack JavaScript. And then you, you know, there's gonna be Java full stack or C sharp or Ruby, depending on what you sign up for, okay? But notice as I'm scrolling down, that's the event, that's interactivity, right? Me scrolling is me interacting with the website. It loads more HTML and CSS. That's why it's like almost infinite because it's pulling from the database a bunch of more posts because the database has all these posts saved. Okay. So there we go. So now let's talk about how we can actually create, I think it's the wrong one. Um, let's talk about how we can actually create some stuff. So there's HTML, there's CSS, and there's JavaScript. Um, let's, let's first build out the content first. We're gonna, our goal is to eventually create like a basic layout of a website. We're using HTML and CSS. Now this might look like this is just CSS to you because you just see colors and you don't see any text or images or any content, right? But this is actually still, these boxes, um, they're called divs. And what a div is, is like a division of a page. It's like a section of a page. If you wanted to see what a, your, some of your favorite websites look like, um, you know, let's do, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna do yesme.com again. Um, I can right click and click inspect, okay? And 
I can see the HTML for this website. Okay, and it has a lot of JavaScript and some other stuff here, right? Um, this looks a little bit complicated, but we're gonna take it easy and take it step by step from the, from the beginning here. But this is a, some HTML code and we're gonna talk about how to write this right now, but I can even select, these are called elements. Any HTML portion is called an HTML element. Like this content right here is like, you see how there's a bullet? That's called a list element. Bullets are called list elements. You see like these bullets, right? You see how there's this font that's kind of like uh, bolded and attention grabbing? That's called a header, H1. And you see this content right here, that's just like uh, some description. That's called a paragraph tag, a paragraph element, right? So there are different types of HTML content elements that you can have. This, what kind of element do you think this is if it shows a picture? It's, a, it's an image, it's an image element, good, right? Um, but now what are these little sections? You see these boxes that the content is inside of? Those are called divs. Those are called divisions. There are different divisions or sections of the page. And you can use HTML to represent those divs, those divisions of the page. So HTML will include the content images and also different divisions of the page. But these different divisions of the page, in order to style this box to be next to this box, I need CSS. So in order to arrange these boxes, I need CSS. Okay. And you can even, you can even do this. Like, you know, I'm not saying try this at home, but if you're like in college and you got to impress your parents <laughs> about the grades that you get, um, that's what I did uh, when I first set, this is, my, this is my first introduction to coding was I was like, okay, I need to change my grades so that it looks better to my parents. This is like when I, a couple of years ago um, when I was getting out of college and I was like, okay, you could click on this little thing right here and I can click on any part that I want to change. And it's not going to change it permanently, but it's going to show you on the code what part on the side, what part of the uh, code rep represents that. And you see it says, what copycat teams can learn from these topsy-turvy NBA playoffs? I can change it saying LeBron is the greatest of all time. And now it looks like ESPN is saying that LeBron is the greatest of all time. Finally, like they should be, you know? But, um, you know, you can even, if you have a vision board, you can even go on your bank account and, uh, you know, add a bunch of zeros doing this, but it's not going to make a permanent change. You're just changing what it looks like on your browser. But if I refresh this page, LeBron's not the greatest of all time anymore. It's, it's Kobe. It's Jordan, it's whoever you want to be, right? It's whatever, it's, it's back to normal. Okay, so it's, it's not, I'm not hacking this website, right? I'm just changing the HTML rep, being represented only on my browser only. When you go on ESPN.com, even if I change this to LeBron's the greatest right here, if you go on ESPN.com, you're not going to see that. That's only on my browser, okay? And if you refresh the page, when you refresh the page, that's starting a new request and you get back a response from the website and you get back this web page, okay? Cool, so you can see the code here and you know, this looks really complicated and we're gonna, we gotta start somewhere though. So we're gonna start from very basics. Let's learn some HTML. So, Let's talk about some HTML. And this is what your learning platform will look like. Here are all the chapters. You know, here's the introduction. That's just saying, hey, programming. You know, this is what programming is about. Request, response cycle, things like that. And then there'll be like a whole day or two that you cover on HTML, like, you know, 16 hours worth of stuff. And then, you know, for the rest of the week, you're gonna work on CSS. But today we're just gonna have a little bit. So let's talk about how we can go ahead and create some HTML. So there are 
So HTML stands for Hyper Text Markup Language. It's just, a, you don't have to memorize that, but it's just a language that allows you to create content on a website. In order to code, I'm going to go ahead and use a, something called a text editor or a coding editor that allows you to code, okay? Because when I first tried to learn how to code, I got a Microsoft Word account and I thought I was supposed to type my code in Microsoft Word. I, I didn't know what I was doing. That's, that's not how it works. I was the first to find that out that day at the coding bootcamp. <laughs> um, like I said, <laughs> I can't, you know, uh, people come in with no experience in the bootcamp. And um, we do have a course called Programming Basics where we catch you up to speed with things like the basic things that you should know before you actually start coding. So highly recommend that for anybody that's interested that has no um, programming experience. And exactly, Brian, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. There are other uh, editors out there like Atom, Sublime, but I'm going to use the one made by Microsoft. It's free. It's amazing. It has all the features and um, yeah, it, it's really great. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. Let me create a new folder here real quick. Let's call this intro to web. Okay, and in this folder, I would like to open this folder in my text editor, my coding editor, okay? So I can say right click. I actually don't do it like this. I, I, I use the, what's called the terminal, but I'm just gonna go ahead and right click new window. It says select a language to get started, start typing to dismiss, or don't show this again. Just, uh, just you can go away. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click open folder. And I'm gonna open the folder that I just created. Intro to web. Uh, yeah, it's just this new security feature. Yeah, just trust all the authors. Cool, it's just an empty folder. Do you guys see this? It's an empty folder. And I can create a new file. And you know, Microsoft Word files, like the extension is .doc and Excel files is like .xls or something. What do you think the extension would be for HTML file? Dot... .html. .html, good guess, there you go. So let's call this um, intro demo, or let's call, I'm just called demo, demo.html. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it potato, you can name it sweet potato. You could name it, um, oh, I, 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 I drove through the United States. I stopped by Nashville and had some hush, hush puppies. Never heard of that before, but it's really good. Gotta try it out. It's a really good dish. So HTML, um, I'm gonna no, notice how the, the symbol came in. This, it, my text editor knows I'm about to start typing in HTML now because of this extension. So now it's actually gonna give me autocomplete suggestions and, um, access to a bunch of HTML related stuff. For example, if I press, press exclamation mark and press tab, it'll actually create the backbone of an HTML page for me. It'll say, hey, what language is it in? And I don't have to memorize and type all this by myself. UTF-8 just means it can also accept characters from like European countries and uh, other countries in Asia or Africa or wherever where different languages have, you know how some languages have like the ac accent over some le letters, right? That, this website, this web page will be able to uh, be supportive of those types of characters. That's what UTF-8 means, okay? Um, basically, I really never type this out myself. I literally just always type in exclamation mark and then I press tab and it'll auto-complete a backbone structure of an HTML website for me. And let's just see what this website looks like. And real quick, um, you see these tags. These are called tags, by the way. Anything with the opening angle bracket, and there's a word here and a closing angle bracket. And these words are not just like made up words. I can't just be like, you know, head of head of champagne operations. You can't just have a tag, like you can't just make up some tags, okay? There's some HTML tag that you're gonna learn about as a developer or as a software engineer, okay? So there's a tag called head and it has, every tag has an opening and a closing 
Well, actually, not every tag has an opening and closing. Some, but uh, some tags self-close. For example, like images. If I type in image, it'll just close just like like this. So not it won't it won't have like a closing img like this. It won't have something like this. Some tags don't have a closing tag like this. They'll be very subtly closed, just with a closing angle bracket, some tags. This is an image tag. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We're going to put some images. But um, this is telling the file, hey, it's going to be a HTML related content here uh, in English. And then the head is like the metadata for the website. What kind of metadata? Things like, um, let's say you're on Google and you search for some websites like google.com. Um, pasta near me, I don't know, pasta near me. And you see how some websites have this information that shows up in the search engine, like some little title and then some description, right? That's like the metadata of the site and there's more metadata to the site. For example, you see how on ESPN.com at the top on the tab, it talks about what this tab, in, in the tab itself, it shows information about ESPN.com just like some information that when you hover over it, it'll show what this website's about. This one has learn student dashboard. This one has uh, the Google doc, the Google calendar. This is GitHub, right? These are, these are titles of our website. So how can we create one for ourselves? Well, first let's look at our HTML file that we just created. In order to see what it looks like, it's as simple as, and there's actually other ways, but I'm gonna just, go like this, you can just drag and drop it onto the browser. Let me make it so that both of these screens can be seen. You can, I can drag this and just drop it like as a new tab. And this just shows me the location in my computer, like the path to get to this file. It's in users, rob the hall, desktop, in a folder called intro to web. And the file is called demo.html. So it's loading up this file and look at the title here. It just says document. So what part do you think I can change if I wanted to say fancy, 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 fancy demo? The title tag, good. I'm gonna change this to fancy, fancy demo. I actually never says fancy at all or smancy. I don't even know what that means. Let's just say fancy demo. Okay. Uh, I'm going to save it. Okay. And then I'm going to refresh this page. And look at that. Fancy demo. Right. Better nice. Cool. So now we're, uh, you know, we got, we got the pasta, ESPN, we got fancy demo, you know. Cool. So we have that. And the head, the head tag, anything that goes inside of it, you see how there's a head tag here and a closing head tag and inside of it, there are other tags, even like this title tag. And you see how this title tag has an opening and a closing and I can put some content in between and anything in between, it knows that, hey, the stuff right here, fancy demo is gonna be a title. It's not gonna be anything else, it's gonna be a title. Exactly, these are, these are called children. So the head has, how many children does it look like the head tag has right now? Four, good. One, two, three, four. Four children, okay. What is the relationship of the box? So if the head, if, if the things inside of the head are children, right? If the things in between the opening and closing tags are children, what would you call the things that are next to it, but not inside of it? Sibling. I don't know. I, I, oh yeah, my Visual Studio Code also has some like shortcuts where I, it takes me to the website. But cool. These are, the body is, 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 a, is a child, right? So let me actually make my indentation. So this, the children to the HTML tag is the head and the body. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to indent it to make it easy to see the children. So it's like, okay, here, if I click on this HTML tag right here, this is, say, this is the beginning and the end of our whole 
web page for this page. And then the head is for the metadata, like things like you would see on the Google searches or things like you would see on the tabs when you hover over a tab and other pieces of metadata, like uh, what devices it's compatible with, you know, things like that. That's metadata of the web page. That's going to be inside the head tag. And, you know, I can define it in here as a child to the head tag. And then here's a title tag. This is called a tag, by the way. These are called tags, things that have the opening and closing. Notice how some of these, when they close, there's a slash and then the same name as the opening tag, but it knows it's a closing tag because of the slash. So this, it knows that it's a title. Cool. So we got the head. And the body is siblings to the head. And the body represents the actual content that's going to be on this location of the screen right here, where it's all white. The reason it's all white right now with no content is because the body is empty. So we can provide some content to it. And how can we provide content? What type of content we can provide? It's, uh, it's, all, it's all over the learning platform here. Uh, you can find it online as well. But the good thing about the learning platform is it curates everything into one place for you. You know, there's so much information out there. It just gives you the information that you really need to know step by step, right? And it tells you more brief, more detailed explanations, explanations of each tag. Like, what is the title tag? This is the title of your web page. Means when you open the web page in your browser, the tab that opens it will read my awesome web page or whatever you named it, whatever you named your title. Right? Look at this meta name and description. You see this Google. So that that's all for the head tag. And then let's talk about body tags, some common body tags. So there's headings and paragraphs of text, right? They show examples of what a heading looks like. So a heading is something that you'd see that's like an attention grabbing text. Can someone read to me an attention grabbing text from this web page? There are a couple. Chris Paul's future. Uh huh. And why is it attention grabbing? It's above a big image. It's above an image and it's also like bold, right? It's not like this, uh, you know, it's not like this where it says, this paragraph right here where it says the NHL did this, right? It's like, it's in bold, right? And same with this right here, right? Lightning to, or light, lightning to host penguins in NHL, right? It's all big and bold, right? If I were to right click on this and click, what's the button that I can click to open up that little window? inspect so i click i right click and click inspect and if i click on this little uh selector thing right here if i click on it and i select this right here look at that it's a h1 that means it's a header and you can go from h1 to h7 i think i think h1 to h7 or h6 i barely use h5s and h6s and beyond right but you can you can go down to like either six or seven something like that um and it's different levels of um, attention grabbing. This one, this one's also H1. You can style your H1s to look different than other H1s too. Right? These are there's a bunch of H1s here. Here's the H1, H1, here's the, right? And this is like a paragraph tag. This is, it says P, right? So let's, uh, let's build our own, okay? Let's build our own. And we can use this information here. Here's some common body tags like an H1. Let's see what the differences of H1 through H6s are. I'm going to open up my Visual Studio Code here still. So I got it right here. I can say H1. Welcome to Coding Dojo. Okay. And I don't see it here. What do you think I have to do to this page so it knows that I updated this code? Got to refresh. Welcome to Coding Dojo. Maybe the H2 tag will say, voila, right? What does the H2 tag look like? It's a little bit less attention grabbing. But you can actually style an H1 to be even smaller than it currently is by default. 
And what do you think I would use to style an H1 to be a little bit different? CSS, good. And we're gonna get to that later, okay? I have an H3. Um, Bucks in six, that's a basketball team. That's just one in six, six games. There we go. It's a little bit less attention grabbing and you know, I'm not gonna do every single H, H uh, header, but let's do H, nope. It actually auto completes. And the beautiful thing about uh, Visual Studio Code, when I type in H, it shows me all my options. Let's start with H, H6. So now I don't have to like guess. It's like, hey, is there an H7, H? I don't even have to memorize. And programmers don't memorize things all the time. They look up stuff, they look up documentation, they use autocomplete, do all types of stuff. So H6, this is an H6 tag. Look at how small this is, but still grab some attention. Right? It's like a it's like a small little attention grabber. It's a little bit more bolded and things like that. So we have those. We can also have things like paragraph tags. Paragraph tag, like, um, so let, let's say I had like a, you know, description like, um, don't let the world change your smile. Let your smile change the world. This is also like a motivational quote demo, by the way. So I'm gonna bust out some stuff. Look, it's just a regular paragraph tag, like in regular fonts, right? So this would be great for like describing things. As you can see, when do they use paragraph tags? Like just, just by guessing here, um, you see this part on my screen So which part of this is the header and which part is the paragraph tag? In this section right here. Yep, bold part is the header, good. And then this part is the paragraph tag. So you, got, you see the use case for paragraph tag and headers, right? And you may think HTML is just boring content like this, but it's also images. So how can I do images? Well, let's take a look, right? Handy dandy learning. Oh wait, hold on. My Zoom drawing thing is still active, hold on. Handy dandy learning platform. And just, you know, spoiler alert, it's the image tag. But yeah, here's some paragraph tags. There's the image tag. So how does an image tag look, you know? So let's see. Okay, so. I'm gonna start typing I, and which one of these do you think I'm gonna use? IMG, right, this one right here. And then maybe I can, I, I can either have some compute, uh, images from my computer linked to this uh, image tag, so it shows images from my computer that I wanna show, or I can have images from the World Wide Web that I wanna show here. Let's do, This is one of my favorite pictures of all time from one of my favorite movies of all time. Okay. <laughs> this is one of his quotes, okay. So this one right here, this is a hilarious movie. This is actually a Giphy thing. So right click, copy image address. So when you click on, right click on an image and if you click copy image address, not copy the link address, but copy image address. And if you paste it on the browser, it'll actually take you to just the image, a link to just the image. So I can use this as my image source right here. So, oh, by the way, how do I do this? I just type in IMG and if I press tab, it'll auto complete all this for me. And then for the image source inside this, this is called a string, a string is like a, um, quote quotes and inside the quotes you can put in some stuff like an image source and if I save it and I got to refresh this I got a little giphy and then it'll say something like 
maybe like this image we'll have, and we'll talk about what this alt thing is too, real quick. But this image, maybe it'll have a paragraph tag. It'll say, this image is Q. We learning H HTML, like HTML, hypertext markup language. Okay, so that's what we're learning. So here's the paragraph tag. Cool. Boom. Cool. It's like describing it a little bit, right? But I just have content all over the place. Maybe I want to separate my content into different sections of the page. Like maybe one section will be like um, about kind of how, look at how ESPN has it, right? Here's a section, just like a navigation section where it just talks about, you know, NFL, NBA, MLB, things like that. And then here's a section with like a most, most like urgent news. And then here's another section with a list of other top headlines, but it doesn't show those pictures. So maybe we could do something like that too. We can separate our page into different sections. And in order to separate your page into different sections, there's a, there's a tag called div. Div. And what does a div look like by default? It looks like nothing. Like what, what does an empty box look like? That, an, an empty box that has no border at all. It looks like nothing at all. It doesn't have any height. It doesn't have any width. It just looks like nothing. But I can put things into this div and a, div, a division is just a section of the page. And maybe I can say, hey, this is the first section. So I can, I can surround all this by a, with a div. If I type in div and I press tab, it'll give me an opening and a closing div. This represents like a section of the page. And I can copy this or cut it and then paste it. And now this information is in this div. So all this information is like section one stuff. Like welcome to Coding Dojo. Here is section one stuff. And then I can have another div that represents other types of stuff like div. And maybe this div was just gonna have a bunch of links. You see how the ESPN.com has a bunch of links. These are like, these look like paragraph tags, but they're actually links. But you can put a link inside of a paragraph tag. If I uh, were to hover over this, there's an unordered list. So these are actually list items because there's bullets. So I could, I could do things like that. Let's uh, create an unordered list. Maybe it'll say an H3. Here is an unrelated list of Rob's favorite things to do. Okay, this is the H3 right now. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, unrelated list of, list of Rob's favorite things to do. Okay, cool. And I can create a, a bulleted list or a numbered list. What do you guys want to see? You want to see a bunch of bullets or a bunch of numbered lists? Bullets, okay, bullets is the first thing I see. Bullets. All right, so I'm going to do UL for unordered list. So in an unordered list, there's an opening and closing, but what does it look like? What does it look like? Well, first of all, I need to save it. What does an unordered list look like? If it does, what does a list of bullets look like if it doesn't have any bullet in it? It doesn't have anything, right? If I right click and click inspect, I can look at my code from here too. Click elements, body, here's a div. Here's my unordered list. This is what my unordered list looks like because there's no, bullets in here. So unordered list just says, hey, I'm setting this up so that anything inside of it is going to be a bullet. And in order to create a bullet, I need to, the tag is called li. And press tab. And let's say, um, play basketball, if you probably haven't guessed already. Um, I like to meditate. I like to Contemplate life. I like to um, play with Junior. That's my dog. Oh, it's like a Jack. 
Jack Russell Terrier, but he's not with me right now because I just moved to San Diego. So I miss him very much. He's in DC. So here's some things I like to do. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like. Boom, unordered list. But maybe I want this section to be over here on the side so that I have one section with all of its content and another section with all of its content. And maybe I want this section to have some border around it and some in its own background color. That's the purpose of a div is a div is like, I'm saying, hey, for this section right here, I want it to be on the right side of the page and maybe a different background color. I could do that. We could also, um, but let's, let's, let's have that and let's also, but we're, we're gonna get to that when we do what? What language are we gonna have to do to be able to do that? CSS, good. Well, we're not there yet, we're gonna get there. Let's do a little bit more HTML and wow, it's already been like an hour. <laughs> okay, so we, yeah, there's, there's just so much uh, content. So yeah, links, let's put some links here. Maybe I can put links in an ordered list. Let's create a new div here, div. And this one's gonna be like an H, I'll have an H3 is like, um, here is a list of top websites for helping with coding. It's gonna supplement coding. In order of Rob's, that's me, Rob. It says Rob there, but Rob's, Rob's preferences. So let's check this out. So if it's gonna be numbered, do you think it would be an unordered list or an ordered list? The latter, right? And if it's gonna be an ordered list, can anyone guess what the tag would be? Would it be UL or? OL, good, good job saying, good guess. Yeah, OL, ordered list. And then you can still represent each item in the list with LI, just like we represent each bullet. So LI, let's say um, stack overflow. LI, let's call this, um, oh, what, what else is that like? Um, W3, W3 schools, LI. Believe it or not, Medium actually has some really great uh, stuff. Especially if you already like know some coding in general, like some basics of it. Oh yeah, Mo Mozilla, how could I forget? How could I forget the Mozilla Developer Network, MDN. Okay, and um, yeah, let's just go with that. So let's see what an ordered list looks like. Cool. Here's a list of top websites for helping Robin code. So now let's say I wanted to um, make it so that I can actually click on this and it'll take me to the website. So just like ESPN, you see how I can click on this text and it'll take me to a new route to a new page, right? Good, yeah, Brian, Brian, Brian's got it. Brian's uh, got some experience, I see. Uh, so yeah, it's the anchor tag. This is called the anchor tag. So I can surround this text with something called an anchor tag. An anchor tag, what is an anchor tag? Well, if I just type in A, well, hold on, let me just type in A and press tab, it'll give me an, an something called an ahref, and there's a closing A tag, right? So there's the A tag. That allows me to create a link. And in between the opening and closing, I can put the content of my link. So now look, we have kind of we have it kind of nested inside of it, right? Inside the numbered list tag, we have a link tag that has some content for the link. Let's see what that looks like. Cool, now it's, it's like a link that I can click on, but if I click on it, it doesn't go anywhere. So this href is where I tell it where to go. HTTP colon slash slash um, www.stackoverflow.com. 
www.thepeopleshow.com. If I click on it now, boom, Stack Overflow. And uh, students use this a lot too. We, we, train, we train students for on the job skills. And guess what, on the job, um, I used to work as a developer, as a at a government contractor, doing Appian, I, I used to work at Oracle. I, I worked at different companies and no matter what company I worked for, as, a, uh, as an engineer, as a developer, as a um, person that's working the software, you're gonna be Googling, I would say about 30, 40, 50% of the time. So that's just a side fun fact. And that's something that we enable students to practice in this course because we will present you guys with assignments where um, the answers that you seek would be online. And then if you can't find it online, we'll help you to find it online. And it'll be on the learning platform and also on Stack Overflow. And we'll help you curate the right types of questions to ask on Google so that you'll find the right results on Stack Overflow and find the right answers that you need, things like that, right? Um, cool. So yeah, we're gonna build this eventually. Cool, so it takes me to Stack Overflow, let me go back and I can create a link for each one of these and I'll quickly just uh, do some CSS on this and then we'll, we'll build this out so that we can have a basic setup for a web page, okay? We'll build something, because this is like a basic setup. You see how even ESPN, it kind of has that setup in a way, right? It's like a navigation area and then um, some main content area, especially the homepage at least. Yeah, navigation area, there's the, this part, and this bottom part with advertisement, like this advertisement area right here, right? It's automatically keep loading. Why does it keep automatically loading? That's the JavaScript. Cool, so we are here. So I'm gonna create some links for these. Uh, what's the W3Schools link again? I just typed in W3, uh, W3Schools.com. This one is great because you can, um, Let's go to w3schools.com, HTML. And there's so many things here. And for example, like HTML forms, right? You can have forms even. Like here's a, here's a form, try it yourself. Here's the code to have a form. There's an opening and a closing tag. We teach you all about forms as well. And then you can, there's a button you know, buttons. There's so many uh, HTML elements, we don't have time to cover all of it. But, so that, this is W3Schools. So W3Schools.com. Where you can actually try out code snippets and try it yourself and see the code for it. And then click run and then you know, click submit. It does this. What's the code for to do that? This is it, you know, things like that. Okay, cool. So let's make it so that it does that. It takes us there. So I would need to surround this with a anchor tag. So I'm just, I'm gonna put a space here. So I type in A and press tab. And then I'm just gonna move this around here so that, oops, so that W3 schools, this is what the link should say. And then the href is where the link should go to. HTTP colon slash slash www.w3schools.com. I forgot it was .com or .org. But let's find out. I right, cool, there we go. All right, W3Schools. And that, that's a great website to learn some HTML and CSS. Um, you know, and I could do the same with these. But any questions so far? Is this making sense? Am I going uh, at a good pace? Yep, doing good. Thank you. Uh -huh. No problem. Cool, cool. You guys learning? Know a lot more than I did before. <laughs> <laughs>
Cool, cool. That's, that's my main goal. Uh, it's, it's all about learning. Learning is a great um, ability we have, right? So let's keep, let's keep learning. Now let's make it so that, you know, uh, this div that contains all this stuff, like what, what, what divs do I have? I have, how many sections do I have now? Looking at this. Three, good. I have one section here. If I click on it, there's this section, there's this section, and then there's this section. So maybe I wanted, what if I wanted these two sections to um, be on the right side of the page and this section to be right here? I can use some CSS to do that. So let's use some CSS and do that. So in order to create CSS, I need to create a new file, but it's gonna be in the same folder and it doesn't always have to be, but for the sake of simplicity, in the beginner, this is beginner friendly, right? I'm putting the same folder, intro to web. We'll create a new file. And what do you think the extension would be for this file? Yep, .css. And yet we can do display flex. Um, I'm gonna do something that's a little bit more beginner friendly though. Um, display flex, we do teach in the first day of the coding bootcamp, uh, flex box, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, we, talk, we teach floats, but I'm gonna use inline block. I know that's, that's a little bit older, but yeah, there's display flex that we, so there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff, but we're gonna do inline, inline block. And then there's the display property, which is like more advanced, but this is like for flexing, the flex advantage. Yep, justify content. We got all that. So position, that's for floating. I think someone said float, left position basics. Uh, there's float somewhere in here. Somewhere in here, but yeah. But I'm going very basic here. I'm just gonna do inline block, okay? Inline block. So, well, first I need some CSS to put the inline block in. So let me just create a new file. Let's call this, you can call it whatever you want. Let me just call this style.css. Cool. And in CSS, notice it's a different type of symbol. It has a different type of syntax. Syntax is like how you write the language. You see how HTML, there's like an opening and closing. It has a certain type of pattern of how you write it, right? Opening, closing, some content, you know, things like that. This is what it looks like. CSS, let me do split screen. And there's this button right here that lets me split screen so I can see my HTML and my CSS at the same time. And I can, CSS purpose is I'm gonna select certain HTML elements and decide what, how they're gonna be styled. For example, if I want all the H1s and I only have one H1 here, but let's say I have uh, another H1, maybe let's say this was a H1 as well. I don't know. So I have two H1s here, right? I have this H1 in line 30 for the top list of top websites. And then I have this H1, uh, the first thing that we did, which was welcome to Coding Dojo. If I wanna select every single H1, I just type in H1 and then do curly braces. This is the syntax, this is the how you, uh, this is the rules of writing this. And then I can say, I can give it some prop, like some types of properties, like it can have a font color, a background color, um, you know, font family, things like that. So. Color, let's say every H1 is gonna be, and notice how CSS, it has its own interface here that comes with, and I have all these options. So colors that I didn't even know existed. I'm gluten-free though, so I'm not gonna use wheat, okay? All right, so white smoke, you're not gonna see that really on a white background, but let's do salmon. I don't know, I like saying salmon, so I'm just gonna do salmon. Now it's gonna change, well, it's not gonna do it yet, just because I told the CSS to select all the H1s, it doesn't, this HTML is like, wait, who are you? Like, who are you to tell me what to do, you know? This HTML doesn't know about the CSS. The CSS is trying to select something from this HTML to change, but this HTML didn't ask for all that. Mm -hmm. It didn't ask for any of that. So in order for the HTML to ask for any of that, we need to link the HTML with the CSS. So that's, does that sound like something I would put in the body or the metadata? In the head, right? It's like metadata is like 
uh, what kind of files would this HTML be linked to as well? That's another part of the metadata. So I'm putting in the head. I'm gonna say, if I type in link, which one of these do you think I'm gonna use? Link CSS, click it and like, guess what? I don't even memorize all this. I just, I just type it and it just automatically says style.css just cause it's like a generic name, but whatever your CSS file is called. So let me actually rename mine, rename it to um, demo style.css. So I just renamed it. So then what do you think I'd have to change? The href, the, the CSS that is linked to. So this is called demo style.css. Now the HTML is asking for that. So now we got salmon, okay? That, uh, Dr. Evil does that too. <laughs> that, that thing, it's a great movie. All my humor is from Awesome Powers, all three series. So, um, so now we got some salmon, okay, cool. But what if I wanted to um, target other elements? Let's do, let's say um, I wanted to target the div and I wanted the div, and I wanted the div to have a background color, but, but I just want this div to have a background color. Like just, just, uh, just this first div, this highlighted section. Okay, I just wanted that to have a background color of blue. But if I select all the divs, what's gonna happen? Is it, am I, is it gonna only let this div have a background color of blue or is every div gonna have a background color of blue? Everyone. Everybody, right? Everybody eats, right? Uh, say it with me. Everybody eats. I'm just kidding. This is actually how my lectures are. I'm like really silly. But um, so there's a CSS property called background. And if I just type in back, right? Look at all this. It, it auto fills, it fills out everything for me. So if I just type in back, I don't got a hollow back. I already got the back ground color right here. And I can put in some stuff here. Let's say I want it to be Wow, that's a cool name. Dark, dark cat. Oh, I thought I said dark hawkeye. That was, that's khaki. Okay, that's not that cool anymore. But dark khaki. Cool. Save it. But oh no, it made all my divs that color. How can I make it so that it, I can identify which div that it'll do that to? Well, the keyword is identify. I can identify it. And yes, uh, Brian, uh, that, that is true. You could do classes or IDs. Classes and IDs, there's a distinction, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go with IDs first. I think it's the easiest to introduce to beginners. I can identify this div, this first div with a you know, unique name. So I can just say right here, I can type in ID is equal to, and let's call this um, Dr. Evil div. Okay, so now I'm not gonna select all the divs Let's say I just wanted to select this Dr. Evil div. So what do you think I would type here? Would I type in div or? Good, Dr. Evil div. However, it doesn't know what that means, but it since it's an ID, there's a certain way to tell it, hey, look for an ID called Dr. Evil div. I need a hashtag. Hashtag will select anything with an ID of Dr. Evil div. And now it's only that they is going to get that color. Okay. Cool. And then um, it's actually good to have all my divs inside of one big div. Let's call this div dot. This is a shortcut. If you type in div dot container, it automatically creates a class called container. That's actually too advanced. I just jumped the gun there. My bad. We got this intro. Um, let's just create another div here. And let me just put all this, all the divs in this div. So this parent div container, it's, it's, I'm gonna give it an ID for now because I think class uh, it's, it's more to, uh, I'll, I'll explain what class is later, but ID, let's call this a 
container. So I can say, hey, every div inside of the container, make it inline, make it display inline block, meaning right now the default behavior of a div of divs are they're going to stack on top of each other vertically. But I can say, hey, you know what? Um, I want all the divs inside of my container div. So I have these three divs to all not stack up on top of each other, but you know, be side by side. I could do that. So I can say, I can target the container div and say, hey, make all of its children display in line, meaning side by side. So I can target the container using a hashtag container because it's called container and it's an ID. So I'm gonna use hashtag container. I'm gonna say, um, there's a property called display and then it's called inline block. If I save that, I think I need to change these ones here. Here, I'm just gonna comment this out. This is how you comment it out, by the way. Uh, when I comment it out, I can still leave it here, but it's not gonna affect my code. I need each one of these. I need to tell inline block for this one, sorry. I teach backend a lot. <laughs> okay, display inline block. So the Dr. Evil div is gonna, when, it, when I say tell it to display inline block, I'm basically saying in other words, hey, allow other divs to be next to you instead of having to be below you. As long as the divs that are gonna be next to you can fit next to you. But these divs, these other divs still are like, no, I don't want anybody next to me. I'm taking up the whole width of the page. But this div isn't gonna take the whole width of the page. So I can get these two divs to also agree that, hey, they're gonna be inline block. So I can target these other divs. Let's give them an ID. Let's give this div an ID, let's call this second div. Uh, and you shouldn't put spaces in your uh, names, by the way. Uh, you shouldn't I identify anything with spaces. Putting spaces is bad practice, unless it's for just like content. So second, let's call this second div. And I'm gonna say to the second div, have it to second div, display inline block. So now they both are agreeing that they can display inline block next to each other. Cool, now it's on the side, okay? And maybe I want this to be at the top or something, you know, it's kind of, it's just right next to it, but maybe I can do, um, there's a property called vertical align top. Boom. So that's gonna make it go over here. And there's some other stuff too, like notice how the, content inside, it's like hugging the border here, right? That's not too pretty. Do you guys like it when there's uh, some spacing with, with the edges and the content? On a website, does it look better when there's spacing? Yeah, I think so. So that's called padding. Padding is the space inside of the border, okay? So I'm gonna say, hey, give it some padding, kind of like if you have some padding on your like in your home, the installation, that padding is inside the boundaries of the home, right? So it's called padding. So for which div do I want padding? Well, I want, let's say I want padding for this div because I, I don't like how this F is kind of like trying to hang off here, right? Let's, do, let's make it so that this div, this particular div right here has some space right here that is not allowed to be touched, like some padding in here. So I can do that. The Dr. Evil div, I'm gonna say padding, and I can give it, I can do it in pixels. I can say, hey, let's do 10 pixels. Pixels are like those little small little dots you see on the computer kind of. Um, not even dots, but like, you know, like the small little, very small amount. And look, now there's some padding here. 
and I can actually increase the padding. Look at this. It shows me in this inspect tool. This is called the developer tools, by the way, or the inspect tools. When I right click and click inspect, and if I click on this thing right here and I select my div, I can see some information about it. Here's the background color, inline block. If I, if I click on this padding right here, I can actually press the up arrow and you know keep looking at it, see how much I like. Yeah, wait, this it's like, oh, this is too much. Then I don't have to keep guessing in my code. I can just look here and be like, okay, how much do I like it? Uh, I like 40, 40 is good. Or you know what? Let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do like 15. 15 is good. I like 15. 15 is just right. Okay. But just because I changed it here, if I refresh the page, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do it. It's still 10, right? It goes back to 10, but I need to change it here. But I now tested, hey, 15 is good. Save it. Boom. And then I refresh it. Now I got it to where I want it. Cool. Sometimes you might want the, do you guys prefer this to be a little bit curved border here? Or do you like a straight? Curve. A little bit curve. Put some curves on that thing. Let's do it. Okay, Dr. Evil did. What do you think it's gonna be called? Which property? Yeah, border radius. And I can tell it, um, you know, how many pixels of um, curvature, say like, you know, let's say 10 pixels. Boom, put some curves on that thing, right? There we go. Awesome, so I can even give this div like a shadow. Like, check this out, it's something called box shadow. I can say one, or let's say five pixels. How does box shadow work? Guess what? I forgot because I teach backend all the time. I, I, my professional life, I did backend. But what, what does a developer do? Does a developer memorize things or is a de developer basically an expert Googler? Which one? Expert Googler, right? So what's a great Google search term I can do? This is on the job skill right here. This is literally what I did at work on the job. Um, how does box shadow work? Or I can, I can literally just type in, um, what language are we working with? CSS, box shadow. There's the Mozilla Developer Network, one of those top websites we talked about, W3 schools. I like W3 schools because I can actually literally like click try it yourself and I can see different examples. This is a box shadow. Okay, and here's box shadow. You could do five pixels, 10 pixels for this one. This is example one, right? I can even do um, five pixels, 10 pixels and give it some color. Let's do that. So I need to give it two things, one for the um, shadow on the right and shadow on the bottom, and then some color. So let's do that, five pixels, 10 pixels, one band, 50 bands, 100 bands. No, one pixel, 10 pixels, 100 pixels. Let's not even discuss it, man. Okay, so um, let's make it gray. Or we can have a golden rod. Now nah, let's do gray. Boom, let's see what's good. Uh, that's not the one. Cool. Better than ass, right? Look what we've done and, and you know, like, you can just keep doing this. You can just keep learning new things and kn knowing new features. And this is just HTML, CSS. This is like scratching the surface. There's so much more to learn. So let's continue learning. Um, what time is this thing over though? I could, I, could, I could be here all day, honestly. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm having fun. Are you guys having fun? Doing good, thanks. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it ends in about 20 minutes. Okay. So um, maybe I want this div to have a different color. I can select that div. What is that div? The second div, it's called second div. Maybe I can give it background color, right? And so on. Let's make it aquamarine, aquaman, cool. 
I can do that. Awesome. Maybe I can, I can even give it a border that has a color a different color. I can say border and then uh, this, is, this is how you do border. I'm not going to Google again just because it's going to take a while. Uh, this one I actually did memorize. Uh, let's say it's like, you know, three pixels, solid, I don't know, uh, purple. Pale, violet, red. I didn't know that's the color. Okay, cool. And then let's look at what happens to this border here. Boom. All right, I can do things like that. But um, that's HTML, and CSS. However, I wanted to um, really touch upon some. I wanted to, I wanted to go over this, making this with you guys. Okay, and this is like an assignment from the first day. It's like one of the first assignments. It's called uh, plot in your bot blocks. These purple ones are assignments that you have to do. And you have so many assignments, don't worry. You're not gonna run out of assignments. But um, how many divs do you see here? Put it in the chat. Brian says eight, seven. Seven or and eight are uh, the most common answers. I will start counting them. This gray one, I, I bet you some of you guys forgot the gray one, right? One, two, three, the red one, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight divs here. And you know, this, this is just a bunch of divs. That's the only HTML on this. And then we just style the divs uh, to make it in this alignment. And then inside the divs, you can put content like the headers and the paragraph tags and images here, you know, things like that. So real quick, uh, I, I do this for my class, but for you guys, you guys are participating really well. So I'm gonna, Bust out, I got, I've been practicing this. I got my Obama accent. I can teach in my Obama accent. I can do that. Let's do that. Well, uh, what we have here is uh, we have eight, not seven, not three, not two, but we have uh, eight divs uh, in here in the coding dojo in the United States of uh, America. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna style these divs and uh, arrange these divs so that they can be next to each other in a format that is modern in a typical website. Now, my fellow humans of Earth, I would like to say we would have to create a new folder and a new project for this because this is a brand new project. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do that. There you go, that's, that, that's it. I, I can't do the whole lecture like that. That's gonna take forever. So, Let's do that. Let's set this up. So how would you do this assignment? Because I feel like you guys might be ready for this assignment already. Okay, so let's do this assignment. This is one of the first assignments you're going to see in your first couple hours in the boot camp. And this is like a, you know, four, th three and a half month boot camp. So it's a lot of stuff. But let's create a brand new project. Okay, I'm gonna create a new folder. And um, create a new folder. And you guys will get a recording to this, don't worry. I'm gonna just right click right here, new folder. Let's just call this um, plotting blocks. Or we just call it plotting because we are plotting how to make these blocks. Okay. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code, new window, file, new, uh, uh, hold on, what am I doing? I forgot how to code, okay. Open folder, desktop, where's my desktop at? Oh, my Zoom window is covering everything, that's why. Plot and blocks, I'm gonna open this up. It's an empty folder, it's got nothing in here, right? Yes, I trust all the authors, I'm the only author, okay. So, nothing in here, I'm gonna create a new file. First, what am I gonna create? What, what kind of file am I gonna create first? HTML, so let's call this blocks.html 
And I can also, let me just go ahead and create a CSS file. Let's call this blocks style.css. Cool, I got HTML, I got a CSS. My shortcut to set my backbone for HTML page, boom. Okay, title, let's call this the blocks. The block is hot. That's a good Lil Wayne album, long time, throwback, throwback. Okay, so good thing I didn't do the ordered list with my top rappers of all time. Everybody would probably leave because I would I would have put Lil Wayne. I'm sorry, that's just my Lil Wayne. I don't know, it's my thing. And Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar is up there too. But anyways, so um, in my in our body, let's think about the setup here. So we have this one big div, this gray div. So does it look like this gray div right here, let's call it one. Does it look like it has siblings or does it look like it has children? It has children. Why? Why though? because all these other things are inside of it. Yeah, they're contained within. Excellent, good, good. So, and how many direct children does it have? Because it might have some grandchildren too, okay? I'll tell you that much. So it has one, two, three. Yep, three children, right? So let's do that. So uh, let me clear my screen here. Clear all drawings, okay. So let's call this div. Okay, that's the, that, let's call this uh, our container, the gray one. Let's give it an ID equals to container. Okay, cool. So then in this big div, there are one, two, three divs right, the green, the blue, and the red. And which one of these has children, the green, blue, or red? Red, okay, cool, awesome. So we're gonna have, and a good practice is to have indentation. Some languages will require you to have indentation, proper indentation like Python and Java, actually no, not Java, just Python and some other, uh, yeah, I think just Python. <laughs> but um, it's good to indent anyways, just so it's easier for other people to read your code. And also it's easier for yourself to read your code because you might go back and visit your code to update some things, just to read it, you know, fix some things. So in the container div, we have three divs, the, the green, blue, and the red. So div, and I'll, I'll show you a cool little shortcut for the advanced people. If, you, if I wanted to create a div with the ID of red, I just type in div, hashtag red and press tab, it'll create a div with the ID of red. Saves me some carpal tunnel syndrome, you know? But yeah, so let's just call this red box or, you know, you can call it red box, whatever. And then, well, not, not red, but I'm gonna start with green though, right? Maybe green, green, and then blue and red. So let's call this green. Uh, another way you can reference this, I'm not gonna call it blue, let's call this top nav. That's, that's what you would kind of ex expect it to be in a website. You might, in an actual website, you might not call it a green box. You might call it, hey, this is my top navigation section. Okay, that's the green. The blue would be like the side navigation. Div, hashtag, side, nav. And why am I identifying these divs? Is it just for fun or is it because um, they all have kind of different styling? and I want to select them uniquely. I'm really bad at open-ended questions. <laughs> uh, it's it's probably, probably, probably the latter, right? It's the, um, it's the, you know, each, each of these divs are going to be styled a little bit differently. But which divs are styled like the same though? Do you see any divs that are styled the exact same? Yellow. Yellow, good. So 
instead of identifying with them with ID, if there's going to be multiple divs that are going to share the same exact styling, instead of ID, it's going to be called class. And we're going to talk about that later. But let's get the, okay, th this top nav is our green. Side navigation is this blue. And then um, this red part is our main, main content. So you can call this, in general, you'll call it something like div, hashtag, main. That's our red div. Okay, these are our three children. One, two, three. I can even put comments like um, exclamation mark, you know, open uh, angle bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash. And I'll say beginning of green div. And then it'll say copy, paste, end of green div. This one, beginning of blue div, and then end of blue div. Let me make this like this. And then the main is uh, beginning of red div, and then end of red div, okay? Now, which one of these divs am I going to put more divs inside of? The red div. I need to put, how many divs do I need to put inside the red div? Four, one, two, three, four, okay. So, there are these three square divs I'm gonna give them something, instead of an ID, since these three square yellow divs are gonna be styled the exact same, they look like the same height and width, same color. I'm gonna call them div with the class name instead of ID name. So in order to do a div with the class name is div dot, and then whatever you wanna name it, let's call this sub content, sub content. And I'm gonna need three of these sub content ones. So boom, boom. You see how these three subcontent divs are the same exact, same exact name? I, if, there, if there's gonna be multiple divs with the same name, am I gonna use ID or class? Class, because the purpose of three divs that are gonna have, uh, divs that are gonna have to share the same name is they're gonna share the same styling. Cool, we got the yellow divs and then, um, we can also have the purple div. So this one, should I give it the purple div a class name or an ID? ID, right? Because it's unique. Just like these other ones with the ID. The yellow ones are the only ones that are repeating the same. So the yellow ones are the class. Okay, so div, hashtag, uh, I was gonna name it purple, but let's call this, ad it's usually like the advertisement area. Advertisement. Okay, cool. Cool, so we have these divs and let's see what they look like. What do you think divs will look like by default if they don't have styling and content in it? Let's see. Almost, almost like, long, yeah, uh, like long rectangles, but with no height. Almost right. So then, it, like, if it has no height, you're not going to see it. Like, inspect elements body. Here's my container div, right? These are this is what my divs look like with no, no styling, right? Like no stylist. Okay. So let's give it some style. What's your div? What's your style? Ooh, CSS. You must be about your mind. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, Create some styling for this. Uh, let's let's take care of the container first. Let's uh, I'm going to select the container. It has an ID. So what am I going to use to select something with an ID? A hashtag or a dot? Hashtag. And we actually didn't cover the dot one yet, yet right? So hashtag, and this is going to be called container. Container. And this is going to have a width. And you can make it responsive using percentages instead of pixels. Like you can say 100%. So it'll take 100% of the width of your device, regardless of what device it is. So that means it's responsive. Okay. It's responsive to your device's 
with, even if you uh, make your browsers with smaller, like I'm doing like by like going like this, it'll be responsive if I do that. But that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, that's called responsive web design. Uh, we're gonna just go with pixels. I'm, this is like the first two hours of learning here, okay? So let's just make it, um, I'm gonna make it like 1,500 pixels. And I'm gonna give it a background color. Background color, let's make it like, um, what is the background color? I can actually select this exact color by right clicking, inspect, and then I can click here on this image. And I think there's a way, there's a way, I just gotta look for it. But because we're, I, I don't wanna be out of time. So um, let's just say it's like gray, silver, you know, silver, let's say silver. Background color, silver. Okay, cool. And let's give it a height too. Uh, this looks like, let me get rid of this. Let's give it a height. I, I can say, you know, like, let's say like 900 pixels. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing here. Now, at least it has a width and a height and a color. So we can see something, you know, we can see something, but we can't really see something because does the HTML know about that? The HTML doesn't know about that. It's like, who you, right? So we need to tell it link. CSS, if I type, if it's click on this, it'll say link uh, style sheet. And what's my name of my style sheet? Blocks, uh, blocks style.css. And then now we got this silver. Okay. Very nice. Cool. So we got this. Now, what else do we need to do? Uh, the, let's take care of the green one. Let's take care of the green one, okay? The green box is gonna be top nav, right? So we just take care of the container. We took care of the container. The container opens and closes right here. So when I click on it, you'll see where it closes. Now this top navigation, it's gonna be green. So I'm gonna select the top nav. It's, if it has an ID called top nav, then I'm gonna use hashtag to represent selecting an ID, top dash nav, and then curly brace. That's the syntax, that's the rules of CSS. And let's give it background color. We already know it's gonna be green. We don't gotta play around with that. And let's say, okay, if the, if the um, container's width is 1500, what would be a good starting point for the width of the green box? 1500, maybe like, twelve hundred. Yeah, so we can try something like that, and we can always make it exactly later with twelve hundred pixel. Uh, don't forget the pixels part, px part. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Isn't like twelve hundred what? Twelve hundred dollars? Twelve hundred points? Twelve hundred minutes on my AT&T plan? What do you want? 1200 pixels. So you gotta represent the units. And then um, with, what else we got? Um, yeah, I think that's, that, that's good enough for now. Let's see what that looks like. It doesn't look like anything. Okay, so maybe I need to give it some height because it doesn't have a height. So let's say it's just like, you know, 200 pixels. I'm just kind of guessing here. Okay, cool. But what does it look like this outer box has the space inside the border? What did we say that was called? Padding. Brian, almost. Margin is the space outside the div. Oh, but actually, I see what you're saying, though. You could put margin on the green one because that would be the space outside of the green one. And that would count as respecting the space outside the green one. That, that's, that's true, too. 
But as we can see here though, it looks like this whole container has padding all around them. So let's use padding to our advantage. So which the padding is gonna be for the silver box. The silver box has padding inside of it. So padding is the space inside of the bound, inside of the edges. So the container is going to have padding and let's just say it's like, you know, 20 pixels. I'm just kind of guessing, I check here. Awesome. Uh, let me get rid of this uh, inspect tool here. I don't need that, okay, cool. Oh wow, this is, might be too big, the container, right? Let's just make the container a little bit smaller. Let's make it like 1300. All right, that's a little bit better. Um, let's make the padding a little bit more. So now I'm just kind of like trying to make it look a little bit nicer now, 25 padding. So now the space between the, like inside, there's more space that's gonna be used up inside this edge here. Cool. And then, um, cool, we got the green box. We'll make it perfect later. Let's get like 80% of it done to approximate and then we can like be nitty picky. Okay, um, we're gonna do the side navigation bar, this one. It's the blue box. So side nav, it has an ID. So I'm gonna use hashtag, hashtag side nav. And then let's say background color blue. Cause we know that that's gonna be blue, right? And let's say it has a height and width of, you know, let's put some random numbers. What I like to do is fail fast, fail forward. So let me just put something in here. Height, I don't know. I mean, I'm not gonna fail that fast though. Let me try to approximate a little bit. <laughs> not gonna fail too fast. <laughs> too fast, too furious. Um, if the top nav is 200, right? This would be like two, four, six. Okay, let's say like 600, 600 pixels. Height, width, let's say it's like 300 pixels. Let's just see what that looks like. Fail fast, fail forward. Okay, now actually not that bad. Okay, cool. We got the blue box. But what does it look like? Does it look like the green box has some space inside of its edges or outside of its edges? Outside. Hey, Victoria, yeah, I'll, I'll message you on Slack. I'll be done in about 10 minutes. Kind of going over time here. So outside, right? The green one has spacing that it's, that's outside. So is spacing outside padding or is the spacing inside called padding? Spacing, yeah, spacing on the inside is padding. Margin is the spacing on the outside, but does, uh, we want margin where? Just on the bottom, right? Because we already took care of the padding here from the silver box, but we want this green box's margin on the bottom to be respected. So we're going to use, so the green box, this one, margin dash bottom, and let's just say it's like another you know, 15 pixels. I'm just going to fail fast, fail forward, try to make a guess here. Boom. And maybe I was like, hey, you know what? I don't like that. I want to right click inspect and I can select this and just be like, you know, select this uh, green box and I can say, hey, margin bottom and just press the up arrow. Hmm, you know what? I like that. I like 30. Okay, I like 30. This is too little, I like 30. But does that permanently change it? Or do I have to actually edit my code with this? Yeah, actually, but this is just for me to see in approximate. Okay, it's 30. So if I refresh it, it's gonna go back to 15. But I know 30 is my magic number here. So 30, boom. And now it's permanent. Cool. Awesome, and then a um, couple more. Red box, okay. Red box, let's uh, do the red box. Um, 
So it's, uh, it's called main. So hashtag main curly brace, background color, red. Height, hmm, what should the height be? It's a little bit bigger than the blue one. Say 800, let's do 800. Height, 800 pixels. Width, what should the width be? A little bit smaller than the green one. So if the green one is a certain amount, we want the red one to be whatever the green one is minus the blue one minus some of the spacing right here too. Let's say, Green one is width minus the blue one's width. What is that? Green one's width is 1,200. Blue one's width is 300, so 900. And also take, take, take away some of this empty space right here. That's gonna be, um, let's say 700. I'm just guessing here. Let's see what's up. Huh? What happened? Ah, it's right here. Interesting. It's right there. Hmm. How can I make so divs by default stack up on top of each other? I want this div to be next to this div. So what do we have to do? Is inline block. Remember how we got the Dr. Evil div to be next to the other div? So we want to do display inline block on both, both the blue and the red, because the blue is saying, hey, I'm taking up all this width. And the red is saying, hey, I'm taking up all my width. So they're both kind of being stubborn. So we need to tell them both to be display inline block, not just one. Because if only red is display inline block, but blue doesn't want to play nicely, then blue is still going to take up all the space. And red is like, oh, well, I'm ready to share my space, but blue doesn't want to share it. Right, sounds like some uh, unfair relationship, right? So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and uh, make the side nav display inline block, and then the main display inline block. Okay, okay, I would say. Does the blue and the red need to be starting from the same height? Yeah, it looks like they're aligned at the top, right? So let's just say vertical align top. Which one is not aligned to the top? This blue one is not aligned to the top. So let's make the blue one vertical align top. Boom. Now the blue one's next to the red one. I would say the red one's height is like a little bit too much though. And the blue ones is a little bit too much too. So let's make blue and red a little bit smaller. And I can test it out. I'm gonna be like, hey, how much do I want blue, the red one to be? Inspect, click on this, click on this. And then the red one's height. I'm gonna go down until I see something that I like. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is good. What is it, 667? All right, let's go to 667 for the red one. It's a weird number, but that's fine. Height, six. Let's just do 665, just to make it like, you know, nice number. Cool, and then the blue one, yeah, it's like that. Let's make the blue one a little bit smaller uh, in height. Let's just say 575. Okay. And maybe the red one needs to be this uh, bigger width and same with the green one. Green and red, bigger width. Let's do that because now it's like towards here, towards here. So the green and red need bigger width. So let's give the green a bigger width. I can now kind of try to make it a little more pretty. Inspect. 
the green one with, it's kind of hard to see the width like this. So what I can do is I can actually make this in the bottom. So then I can see the side like this. The green one's width. Let's do, let's do this. One, two, nine, five for the green one's width. So green one's width, one, two, nine, five. If I save this, it should stay like this now. Boom. And the red one, let's just, uh, I'm gonna select it using this selector thing. Click on the red one and then go to the style section right here. And I just kind of got a, the red one's width. And this is gonna take forever if I do that. So let's just say, let's make it 800 real quick. Nope, 900, nope. One zero, nope, that's too big. And go down and then just keep making it just so it's just lined up horizontally right here. Cool, 991, okay. Let's go 991 here for the red with 991. All right, cool. Uh, blue one, I think the blue one's height is Height and width could be a little bit smaller. Let's make it 550 and, and the width can be like 250. Cool. Then I would probably want to make the red one a little bit bigger again. Um, oh, that's the height, oops. Oops, my bad. The width. Boom, 1,041 pixels. Okay, let's change it here. 1,041 pixels. 1041. Excellent. Good and ask. Cool. So uh, let me just get rid of this. Okay, this is, this is good enough for now. Let's get the yellow boxes. Let's get the yellow boxes in there. So these yellow boxes are the subcontent ones. And I want them, and I, I want to style them all the same way because these yellow boxes are all styled the same way. So let's, in order to target some, do they have an ID or a class? They have a class. If it has a class instead of an ID, I'm going to use dot to target it instead of a hashtag. So dot sub content. So it's going to target all the sub content divs, these three. And let's do, we already know the background color is going to be yellow. And then the height is going to be like, I don't know, 200 pixels. Let's fail fast, fail forward. Height with 200 pixels. And then um, let's see what that looks like. It looks like one big box, but it's actually three boxes. If I click inspect, I can click on this thing. You can see there's one, two, and three, and notice how it's taking up the width of the rest of this space here, isn't it? So how do I make it so the yellow boxes don't take up their whole width of the container that they're in so that they can allow things to be next to each other? What's that called again? A margin is the space outside of the, um, we're gonna need margin, we're gonna need margin, Brian, you're right. But right now these yellow boxes are stacked on top of one another though. So what solves the problem of them being stacked on top of each other? Yeah, display inline block, perfect. So some content display. Now there is the display flex thing for anybody that's advanced. Uh, that's gonna be presented to you in like the later parts of the course. Like when I say later parts of the course in like day two and three, you know, like I don't wanna. So we got these yellow boxes and let's see. It looks like the red box has some padding in the inside though, right? The red box has some padding. The red box inside of the red box's boundary is some space that needs to be respected. Or in Bergman's uh, terms, respect, it needs to be respected. So put some respect on this uh, space right here that's padding for the red box. So 
adding, let's do 20 pixels. I'm just gonna kind of estimate it here. Okay, so now what happened is the padding actually made this box a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So I need to make this red box a little bit smaller so that it can actually fit things with this padding. So let's say it's a thousand, thousand, cool, now we get a cool number. Uh, now we get a good number. So the red box width needs to be a thousand. And I can make the yellow boxes bigger. So let's make the yellow boxes like, let's do like 325, I don't know. And they're squares, so height and width is gonna be the same. Cool, yellow boxes. And it looks like the yellow boxes, on their right, there's some space outside of the border. So what's the space outside of the border? Brian? Now it's margin, right? Space, yep, space outside of the yellow boxes. So I need to increase the space between the yellow boxes. That's the space outside of the yellow boxes boundaries. That's margin. Margin is the space outside. So margin, 10 pixels. Cool, but these yellow boxes don't fit with that margin. Let's make these yellow boxes a little bit smaller. What size do we need to make the yellow box? I'm gonna click on the yellow box with what size does it need to fit? Boom. Let's do 300. Let's do 300 by 300, because they're squares. So 300 by 300. Cool. And then the last but not least, actually, it's kind of like the least, but still. Um, advertisement. That's going to be the purple box. Always got to finish off with the purple, purple box that is. Um, so uh, advertisement, it has an ID. So we're going to use hashtag, hashtag advertisement. And it's going to be background color purple. Okay. And then let's do height. Let's say it's like, you know, 300 pixels. Width, let's say it's like a width of the purple is about the same as the width of these three yellow boxes combined plus a little bit of the margin, right? So a little bit more than the width of the three yellow boxes. Three times three is nine, 900. Let's do like 950. No, need about nine, oh, that's, that's height, oops. Width is about 950 pixels. Let's see what we get here. Purple box. The height is a little bit too big on the purple box. Height, let's do 200. Awesome. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So um, I could just give it some, I could give this purple box a little bit extra margin on the left side so it moves to the right so that the space increases. I could do that. Ah, margin left, I say like 10 pixels. All right, cool, there we go. I guess that pretty nicely. And then uh, let's make this red box a little bit smaller now because since we filled it up with some other boxes, the red box started stretching out. So we, we need to make the red box a little bit smaller. What do we need to make the red box? Let's see, I'm gonna click on the red box and then the height, I'm gonna decrease it and I'm gonna make it probably around here. Let's do 625 for the red box height.
Cool. Cool. And then um, here's our finished product. And we can put content inside these divs, like, you know, I'm not gonna do all that right now, but you know, top navigation, it'll be like an H1. Welcome to the dojo. Or something like that. And then I can, you know, do more stuff from there. Okay. But that's about it right there. Hope you had a really educational and fun experience with this demo. And hopefully this demo um, helped you to figure out if you enjoy learning how to code and if this is something that you'd want to move forward with in your life in learning how to code and learning a technical skill that isn't going away anytime soon. You know, being able to Google, being able to, uh, you know, Google, being able to get errors, being able to configure, being able to code, all these skills are only going to continue to increase in demand. And, um, you know, if you enjoy doing this, um, hope to see you at the coding dojo. Are there any questions? And yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. No problem. My pleasure. Um, let me bring uh, uh, one of my colleagues here in because she's the one that's going to send you guys the email with this video so that you guys can go over this again if you want and try to build this on your own. Uh, make sure you install, if you wanted to uh, use the same editor that I used, it is called Visual Studio Code. And if Visual Studio Code, I'll post a link to this, okay, in the Zoom chat right now. So feel free to um, download it. Uh, let me just post it in the chat. In the chat, where's the chat? Oh yeah, chat. Post it in the chat here. Boom. Awesome. Cool. So um, yeah, feel free to uh, download that and uh, just wait for just a little bit so that uh, my colleague can get here and she's gonna send you guys emails with this, um, with more information about the dojo, including this uh, recorded workshop. So I'm gonna message her right now, hang tight, and we can have open Q&A while that happens. Um, Slack. All right, so she's gonna come here now and uh, close this out for us. Victoria is her name. Victoria, are you in here right now? Or? Um, I'm, I'm, uh, she should be here shortly. Maybe she's in a meeting or something. But for now, are there any questions? Do you guys have any other questions or comments? Nope. Okay. Hey, Victoria. Hi there, guys. Hi, Sarab. Hey, I'm going to stop. Hey, everybody. All right. Um, I actually don't have the updated slide ready for you, but I will use the old one. Sorry. I apologize if I wasn't present during the first part. Can you guys hear me just fine? Um, you're breaking up a little bit. Or is that just me? Yeah, I figured. Uh, one second. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's choppy for me. Too. Choppy, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. It's been crazy with the weather recently. I guess that's affecting my connection. Give me a sec, though. Let me know if it's better now. 
it's, it's still choppy. How about now? Oh, well, it's better now, yeah. Nice. All right, cool. Um, I threatened my router in my head to cooperate. <laughs> so let me share my screen real quick. Uh, if you would be kind enough to let me. Oh, yeah. Um, more make co-host. Go ahead. Thank you so much. All right. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Awesome. So let me introduce myself properly. I guess there's one person here who knows me. He's my student. Uh, he's currently enrolled already. Hi, Brian. So special mention. Uh, my name is Victoria. I'm one of the admissions advisors here in Coding Dojo. I hope you had fun during Saurabh's, you know, lecture. This is what you will be encountering while you're in the boot camp. Although I know that pretty much not everybody has the same situation, so you need to still figure out if you're going to be focusing on software development or would be exploring our other programs like data science. We also have our first cohort for cybersecurity. So I know it's a process and, you know, an admissions advisor like myself will reach out to you um, after this event uh, to help you figure out which path to take. But this is pretty much what you would be experiencing while in the boot camp, a fun learning environment wherein not only will you learn to be a self-sufficient developer, but you'd still be able to enjoy the learning process. And out of the boot camp, you would know still how to work well with others. Yeah. Um, so we do have several programs. Uh, we have full time and part time. Uh, I know some of you may have other commitments like a full-time job, you have family, you have things to do for yourself. So you really need to figure out which route to go. Um, so if you haven't yet, you can go to the website to schedule a phone call with an admissions advisor like myself uh, to talk about your options. Now, like I said, this slide is not yet updated, but uh, so I apologize for that. Um, before I focus on the tuition cost and um, the you know stacks that you will be learning, um, one thing I would really, we learned a lot in two hours. Yes, yes, you're gonna be living, eating, breathing coding for the full-time program. That's a three and a half month uh, curriculum. Part-time is a little bit longer, but uh, you will still get access to the same kind of resources. You will be taught the same things just at a much slower pace. Great for people who have full-time jobs during the day, you know, it's just so you can have flexibility and schedule. Um, and for anything career-related, I assume that majority here is looking at coding or being a developer as a switch to what you're currently doing. Uh, we have a career services program that will really guide you on what you need to know and what you need to do to prepare yourself to enter this industry. Like, your instructor will teach you the things you need to know to become a developer. Your career services manager will help you prepare for the time that you will be applying for jobs in this field, like from working on your portfolio, your resume, LinkedIn profile, attending workshops, technical mock interviews, just so that when you get to the point that you will already be interviewing, you can ace the, that part of the process. Like you can easily showcase who you are as a developer because you're that confident and prepared. And it's a lifetime benefit, guys. So once a ninja, always a ninja, no matter how long it's been since you've graduated from the program. And yes, it's going to be live instruction. In instances, let's say you're in the part-time program, you miss a class, you will get access to the recording. Same thing for the full-time program. It's just that um, attendance is really required for that one. So as much as possible, um, we avoid students from missing any class because you would need to catch up a lot when doing the full-time one. Um, and as you have seen, it's beginner friendly. Um, some of you at the beginning may have thought that this may not be easy for you. That's true. It's going to be tough. There's work that needs to be done, but you will be part of a community that will be supporting you and you will be learning together. Um, so for sure, it gets easier along the way, just as long as you stay committed, you know. Um, so in front of you, uh, 
these are the old tuition fee rates. Um, it has then ex increased uh, effective July 1st. So tuition cost for full-time is 16495 Part-time ranges from 8995 to 16495 for the accelerated one, just because you have the option to start with one stack, do two or do all three. So if you wanna get your feet wet and you feel like starting with one is the best route for you, you can do that. Or if you feel like you're ready to take on all three, that's great. Um, that's where the price varies. Now for the part-time flex program, it's just gonna be Web Fundamentals and Python only for 28 weeks. So duration, as you would see, it varies as well. Shortest amount of time you'll spend in a bootcamp is doing the full-time one, which is 14 weeks. 16 to 32 for the accelerated one, depending on the number of languages that you'll be taking. And the flex program will be 28 weeks. Time commitment differs as well. Um, you're looking at 70 plus hours uh, with a full-time program just because this is our intensive course. Um, so definitely after the lectures, there will be still work that you need to do, uh, Mondays to Fridays. Accelerated program, uh, it's up to you how you're gonna be dividing that throughout the week. And the classes would either be Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, depending on the month that you're gonna be joining. So that's twice a week lectures, an hour each. Flex one, it's once a week. It's an hour, same thing. So day that you will be doing the lecture will also differ depending on the month that you're gonna be joining. So your admissions advisor would be able to tell you more depending on the month that you feel like you're ready to join. Um, all our programs start off with Web Fundamentals. So just like what you went through today, um, foundations will be laid out for you just so you could really have a better understanding of what coding is. So it is easier for you to transition to your stack proper. And typically you would start off with Python. Um, so that's it for the major software development curriculums that we have. If you're interested in a different track, let your admissions advisor know, or you can go onto the website codingdojo.com, um, pretty much all Almost all the information is there. Uh, even payment options, uh, it's the same for all programs. You could either pay in full, pay in installments, you can apply for a loan, you can apply for an income sharing agreement, except for um, the California area. Now, speaking of area, um, just like, you know, other institutions and, you know, there are different guidelines per state, um, our programs are not available in some states. So, um, let me try to post that later, uh, in the Q and A portion, which states. So at least as early as now, you would, you could already see which ones, or if you belong to those restrictions. So. Um, yeah, you know, I'm excited for you guys. Uh, I, I was looking at the chat, monitoring it while the lecture was ongoing. You guys are really participative, which is great. Um, that only shows that you are eager to do this. And if there's any interest to start as soon as possible, feel free to talk to your admissions advisor about it. Um, we don't want our students cutting it close to the deadline just because we have resources readily available for you before you even start your classes. Like you go through pre bootcamp material or pre course work that allows you to gain familiarization of the curriculum. So come your first day, you're more confident, you don't get overwhelmed and you're just sitting there and enjoying the journey, you know, and you take care of to do things um, through the admissions process. Like that's ticked off of your list. Um, so you won't need to be stressing about it while your classes are going. So yeah, um, you would be able to view a copy of the recording just in case you wanna go over it again and your admissions advisor um, definitely will be sending you a copy of it as well. So any questions? 
Um, I would like to a lot, just a few more minutes. I know we went over time, but it was a fun lecture. Who wouldn't want to extend, right? Um, any questions for either me or Saurav? Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> And uh, you can also find a copy of this recording in the YouTube channel. Uh, instructors are using YouTube now, so um, mm -hmm. um, you can check out that YouTube channel. Subscribe if you want to see more updates and more videos as well. Uh, but this recording will be also there. There you go. Lots of cool resources there, too. Who isn't on YouTube, so. You can post it in the chat if you don't want to speak up. All right, um, I posted the abbreviation of some, well, the states that our program is not available at. So just for your reference. Oh, and one more thing I forgot, sorry. And this is all, uh, only not programs not on, uh, available on site, right? Uh, actually, even online. Oh, um, yeah, uh, based on compliance and guidelines, we're still working on uh, getting reapproved for these states. It's not that we won't be able, like, no longer be able to run the program. It's just that there are several layers to obtaining enrollment approval in each state because it's different you know, per area. So we're still currently working on it. Um, so we don't wanna stop you from exploring other options, but if ever we are able already to re-enroll in these areas, for sure you would know on the website and whoever is your admissions advisor that you get to talk to will update you as well. But you're still free to, you know, um, schedule a phone call with us if you want to know more about the whole process, um, about the other programs that we offer, just so you have better insight. And then once you know we are available in these areas, um, you have the information that you need. All right. Well, I know it's getting late in the day. If you don't have any questions for the meantime, that's okay. Um, you can go ahead and do that through the call that you will be having with your admissions advisor. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for being here, for taking the time out of your busy schedules. Um, I hope you had fun. I, I saw you guys did. That was a great Obama impersonation. Like, really great job. And instructors even do performances during graduation. So that's something to look forward to. <laughs> Anything you want to say to them, Sarah? Yeah, uh, thank you all for participating. Just know that uh, wherever you decide to uh, learn and educate yourself on, whatever you decide to educate yourself on, um, participating is a great way to get the best out of whatever program you're in. Participate. Yeah. So great job in doing that. And I'm sure if you do that, no matter where you go, you're going to get the best out of whatever you do. All right. Well, thank you guys. You enjoy the rest of your evening and hopefully we will see you soon. Yeah, I'll see you.